everyone happy new years to everyone today i am back with another video and this time i'm gonna be doing a full set so the first thing that i'm doing is i'm going in with a 180 sanding band to remove the shine from the natural nail again this is a 180 sanding band and i'll be sure to leave the link in the description remember when we're removing the shine we're literally just removing the shine we're not falling to thin the nail out we're not falling to do anything else but to simply remove the shine from the natural nail if you do not do this step correctly you will get lifting Now I'm going to go in with the tips and I'm using my natural nail tips and for the glue I'm using the KDS glue and these are the tips that will be on my website and are the ones that I use all the time and they're really really sturdy which is why I like them. So remember when you're applying nail tips remember that if one tip is too small and the other one is too big always go with the bigger one and just file it down on the sides to make it fit perfectly. Once you get the correct size you apply the glue on the nail tip. Put it on the nail and just hold it down for a few seconds until the glue dry and usually this glue dries really really fast so again if one tip is too small and the other one's too big always go with the bigger one and just file it down to fit perfectly if you go with the smaller one most likely you will get lifting or the nail will break off so make sure that you're grabbing the right size nail tip so we're going to go ahead and apply all of the nail tips and i'll be back Alrighty, so after we finish applying the nail tips, we're going to go in and just trim the nails. So usually, of course, if they want them shorter, then you can go ahead and cut them down. But she wanted to keep them this length. So now I'm just going in with a straight edge nail clipper. And we're just trimming the sides of the nails. And this is just going to save us time whenever it's time to start shaping the nails. She is going to get stiletto. So as you can see, I'm cutting them in a little bit more narrow. That way, again, it's going to save me a lot of time whenever I'm following because that's just nail tip that I do not have to file off after this I'm gonna go in with my 100 100 nail file and we're just gonna start shaping the nails again I am doing stiletto so I'm just gonna file from side to side at a 45 degree angle as you can see I'm just taking turns going from one side to the other making sure that you keep alternating because if you file too much on one side then your nail will be crooked and then also making sure that you blend the nail tip and that's just to make it look a little bit more natural once you apply the acrylic but as you can see we're falling at a 45 degree angle and then it's same, basically the same thing you would do whenever you are doing a coughing nail because you're falling at a 45 degree angle but instead of having a a flat top or like a flat um, or square free edge we just have it pointed so we just kind of round off the tip but again we fall at a 45 degree angle on the sides alternating from side to side and then just rounding off the top and then you can make them as pointed or as rounded as you would or as your client would like
Alrighty, so we're finishing shaping the nails. As you can see, the shape looks really good. And also remember to blend the nail tip right in the middle. But after that, I'm gonna go ahead and dust the nails off and then I'm gonna go in with my primer. So I'm using my OPI Bondex. We're just applying that on the natural nail, making sure that you do not get it on the skin because if it's any cuts on the skin, it will burn them really bad. After this, I'm gonna be using my Glow in the Dark Acrylic Powder, which is this one, which is like an off-white looking color I'm gonna be doing the ombre on a few of the nails and I'm also gonna be using my cover rose by Mia secret as well as my cover pink which is a more translucent pink And as you can see, whenever I'm doing the ombre nails, I like to just go ahead and do the ombre nails first because it's just a bit easier for me or at least doing the tips first and then coming back and adding the pink. Um, I did mix this glow in the dark powder myself. As you guys know, it's just the clear, um, not clear, but the truly natural OPI powder. And I added some of the glow in the dark powder to it. And then I also added it to this finger. That way it glows um, even after I add the glitter to it. Alrighty, so after we finish doing this nail, we're going to go ahead and finish off the ombre. So again, I'm using my cover rose. As you can see, I apply a bead closer to the cuticle area, brushing it down, blending it in the middle. You want to make sure you don't brush that pink all the way down towards the tip because if not, it will take away from that ombre. So just make sure that you're blending it right in the middle because then afterwards, you're going to come back and encapsulate that with the pink me a secret acrylic or you can use the clear whatever you like the best but as you guys know the pink one by me a secret is really translucent once you apply the top coat and everything you really can't see that tint of pink or at least not to me but um again this is me a secret pink the other one that i use closer to the cuticle area which is the cover pink is in the color cover rose and then the one I used on the tip is a truly natural acrylic powder by OPI mixed with some glow in the dark powder. And the brush that I'm using is a number nine by, Al by Alpha brush. As you guys know, I do have a promo code for them, so I'll be sure to leave that down in the description. Alrighty, so same thing for the pinky. We're going to apply that bead closer to the cuticle area, patting it down, and then blending it right in the middle. Be sure not to brush it all the way down towards the tip because it will take away from the ombre look. You want it to be like half pink and half white. That way you get that ombre look. Um, after that, we're going to go in with the pink acrylic by Mia Secret just to encapsulate the two colors together. But remember, whenever you're applying your acrylic, make sure that you're looking at your nail from different angles. Don't just add acrylic just to add it. Make sure that you're adding it where you need it. And also make sure that you have a good and strong apex. Um, I have been seeing a lot of people having problems on my Facebook page about not having a strong apex. And basically, that's just like right in the middle of the nail closer to the back you want that part of your nose to be a little bit thicker because if you're to break your nail if you're about to break your nail that's where the nail gets strength from so if your nail is really really flat it's going to break really easily so make sure that you're applying a little bit more acrylic there as you can see i'm just looking at my nail from the side and just adding more as i need it so you don't have to stick to a certain method but usually i do one bead in the middle like you see me doing here as you can see i'm brushing that down towards the tip and then I'm going to come back and add another bead, either above or below. It's always going to be different depending on what size your first bead was. Maybe your first one was big enough, but as you can see, I'm adding another one right below that one. Brushing it down towards the tip. And also with the little nails, you want to make sure that the tip is not too thin because they will break off easily. So make sure that you keep that in mind as well after that we did the second bead now we're going to do a third one closer to the cuticle area as you can see i place it down and then just pat it down and i'm kind of like pushing it up towards the cuticle and then brushing it down towards the tip and then cleaning around that cuticle 
Remember that if you get any acrylic on the skin, you want to wipe it off as soon as it gets on the skin because if not, it's going to dry up and it's going to cause lifting. And then every time that you see me lift my client's finger, that's me looking at it from the side to check to see if I need to add more. And then also, as you can see, I wipe on the side of the nails to make sure that we keep our shape. That way at the end, we don't have to do a lot of falling. So I'm going to go ahead and start on the other nail. Uh, it's going to be the same thing. We're going to do the all pink acrylic on this ring finger, which is the translucent pink. I do the first bead right in the middle. And then I'm going to come back and do another bead right below that one. As you can see, I'm brushing down really gently. You want to make sure that you do that. You don't want to brush super, super hard because you don't want to brush all that acrylic off the nail. You want to keep it on the nail because if not, you will be wasting a lot of product. And then as you can see, I'm pushing the product up onto the nail. And if I didn't, it would take away from our shape and we would have to do a lot of filing at the end. So the third bead goes closer to the cuticle area. As you can see, I'm gently just pushing it up closer to the cuticle and brushing it down towards the tip. And after that, I clean around the cuticle area. And then after that, the last bead will go right behind that one, which is in the stress area. And then as always, if you need to add more, then that's fine. I cannot stress that enough. You don't necessarily have to stick to a one bar method, a two bar method, three, four, however many. Just look at your nail from different angles. If you need to add more, that's fine. Because say that your nail was already thick enough and you were just on the second bead and you keep adding a second or a third or a fourth and you would have to keep adding more more and then your nail is going to be super thick so again make sure that you look at the nail from different angles and you determine if you need to add more or not but it's just going to be different for each nail because again it would just depend on how much acrylic you apply on your first bead or second bead but anyways we're going to go ahead and apply the acrylic for the ombre nails which is this off-white color and we're going to do the same thing we're going to do this index finger and the pinky so I'm laying down that off-white color first and then we're going to come back and do the cover pink at the back. And then as you can see, I skipped two nails on the other hand. That's because we're going to be doing glitter and glitter gets really, really messy. So I don't want it to get on the rest of the nails, which is why I'm going to come back and do those at the end. And then for the middle finger and the thumb, I'm going to do a really thin layer of that same glow-in-the-dark acrylic. And that's just because I want the background of the glitter to glow-in-the-dark as well. But I'm just doing a really thin layer as you can see here. Um, and then also remember that I'm going to come back and of course do the cover rose yes the cover rose by mia secret on the ombre nails and that is definitely my favorite cover color by mia secret it goes on really good and the color is really pretty the cover pink it's a little bit too pink for me and it has shimmer like glitter in it and then the cover beige is a little bit too well that one's pretty too but it also has glitter in it and the cover rose is like the perfect color um but again we're gonna apply the bead closer to the cuticle area brushing that acrylic towards the middle of the nail you don't want it to go all the way down towards the tip because it will take away from your ombre and then you can go back and add some more if you need to but remember look at your nail from different angles and see if you need to add some more and then after this we're just going to come back and encapsulate that and remember you want to make sure that when you're doing the little nails that you're making sure that the tip is not super thin because they break easily so make sure that you have a nice stress area that way again if you bump your nail on something if it's super super flat it will break off and i know that i say that a lot but i promise you you want to make sure that you have a nice apex which is closer to the cuticle area and i'll show you a picture here of what an apex should look like or where the apex is Alrighty, so here is a picture of where the apex is located and with the right apex placement and thickness you won't have to worry about your nails breaking off so again that is the thickest part of the nail you don't want it super flat because your nails will break because again that's where your nail gets its strength from so that is really really important you want to make sure that you have the right apex placement but anyways we're going to go ahead and continue doing the acrylic
Alrighty, so now I'm going to go in with the glitters. So this is just a gold glitter mixture that I made. And it's literally just like different types of gold. Uh, but mostly like just a fine gold. And then a couple of uh, iridescent pieces in there as well. And I was going to try to do like some type of glitter design. But I decided to just go ahead and do a full nail of glitter on this thumb. But as you can see, I dip my brush into the liquid and into the powder get a bead of acrylic and then i dip that bead into the glitter and i place it on the nail and then i still come back and encapsulate that but i'm just doing a thin layer of that glitter over the whole nail making sure that i get a full coverage and then i come back and encapsulate that and remember whenever you're encapsulating things like glitter you want to make sure that you do the acrylic thick enough because if not you will file some of that acrylic off whenever you're or not the acrylic but file some of that glitter off whenever you come back to file Alrighty, so for the middle finger, I'm going to do an ombre with the glitter. So as you can see, I place a bead on the tip. I'm brushing it down towards the tip and then just blending it up towards the top of the nail, making sure that I get a full coverage. So I'm just adding a little bit more to the tip. And then again, I'm just going to come back and encapsulate this. So as you can see, working with glitters is really, really messy, which is why I do it at the very end. Because if not, that glitter would be on the rest of our nails and I did not want that. So make sure that if you're doing encapsulated glitters, you leave those for the end if you're only doing like a finger or two. So same thing for this thumb, we're going to do a full nail of the glitter. So I place my bead, making sure that I spread the glitter out throughout the whole nail. And I brush it down towards the tip. And then sometimes the glitter is a little bit um, like still see-through, so that's why I come back and add a little bit more. 
but um it's really simple again i dip my brush into the liquid and into the powder dip it into the glitter and then i just place it on the nail and after that we just come back and encapsulate it and i do want to make sure that you guys know that you can of course use clear acrylic but i just go ahead and use my pink acrylic because it's really translucent and once you do the top coat you can't even tell that it's pink or at least i can't i know some people say that they don't like it but i don't mind it and my clients don't either so i just go ahead and use my pink Alrighty, so after we finish doing the acrylic, I'm going to go in with my 100-100 nail file and we're just going to reshape the nails. So as you can see, there's still that stiletto shape, of course, but sometimes the edges get a little bit rough once we apply the acrylic. So we just have to go back and reshape those nails. It's really important that you do not skip this step because the acrylic does take away from your shape a lot of the time. And I always have people in the comments saying that they lose the shape. Well, you have to make sure you come back and do this but again i'm using a 100 100 nail file and we are just reshaping those nails Alrighty, so after we finish shaping the nails, I'm going to go in with a fine drill bit and I'm going to be following the acrylic. So as you can see, I start around the cuticle area, working my way around from the right side over to the left side, just going back and forth and then with the belly of my drill bit, following the rest of the nail making sure that you seal around that cuticle area really really good because if not you will get lifting because any little gap that you leave in between the natural nail and the acrylic water or any type of moisture will get trapped underneath the nail and it's going to cause the nail to lift so make sure that you focus around that cuticle area first and then the rest of the nail and also as always if you are a beginner and you're still having a hard time trying to let your acrylic really smoothly you will have to do a little bit more falling but um, if you are a little bit more experienced then you will be able to apply your acrylic a little bit more um, smooth so you won't have to do as much falling but I still focus around that cuticle area to make sure that I seal it really good to prevent any lifting at all but again this is a fine drill bit and as always i will be leaving all of the information down in below to all of the materials that i'm using
Alrighty, so once we're done filing the nails, I'm going to go in with a buffer. And this is just to get rid of any of the scratches left from our e-file. This is another step that you do not want to skip because if you don't do it, you will be able to see any little scratch through your polish. So make sure that you go back and buff them until they're nice and smooth. And as you can see, I run my thumb over the top of each nail to make sure that it's smooth. If not, I come back and buff some more. But after this, we're going to go ahead and dust the nails off and wipe them off with an alcohol wipe. Or, of course, you can have your client go wash their hands, whatever works for you. Alrighty, so now I'm going to go in with my Color Club polish in the color Just My Luck and I'm applying that on the ring fingers. And of course, this is going to be a full nail of bling. As you guys know, this is what I always use as a base because they match the bling. So if anything was to fall off, it won't be as noticeable. So again, I'm doing that on both of the ring fingers and it is a regular polish. And for my bling, as always, I use my Mia Sicker Gel Resin. I went ahead and applied that on the nail. And then with my wax pencil, I'm going to pick up my SS6 and my SS12. And then I'm also going to be applying some pearls. So I'm just going to apply that over the whole nail. But as you can see, I always start around that cuticle area, working my way around on the right side, just around the whole per perimeter, perimeter of the nail and just filling in as I go. And then, of course, just adding more glue as you need it. And I just want to say how lately adding pearls to the bling just makes it look so good. Like it's so simple, but it's just so cute to me for some reason. Like it just gives it like a classic look. I don't know. It's, maybe it's just me, but it just looks so cute. So after this, as always, I'm going to go back in with that sand glue and just going around the edges to make sure that they're nice and sealed and we don't, you know, have any missing stones and then i'm also going to go back and spray that nail with the mia secret gel resin activator Alrighty, so now we're just going to go in and apply the IBD gel top coat on the rest of the nails. And then, of course, we're going to cure them for 60 seconds. As you can see, I didn't want to add too much bling just because the ombre already looks really flawless. And that glitter is really shiny, which is why I only did the rhinestones on one nail. But again, this is the IBD gel top coat. We're going to apply this and then put them under the UV LED lamp for 60 seconds. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other hand. Alrighty, so same thing. We applied the Mia Secret Gel Resin with the wax pencil. We're going to pick up our SS6 and our SS12, starting at the middle, working our way around the nail, and also adding the pearls and then just adding more glue as we need it.
Alrighty, so I'm applying the IBD gel top coat on this hand as well. And again, after we're finished with this, we're gonna go ahead and put it under the lamp for 60 seconds. And I do wanna mention that I had a question earlier asking about um, does UV lamps only cure gel polish? And yes, they do. They only cure gel polish, not regular polish. The only way to dry regular polish is with a little fan or just let them air dry. But anyways, here is the final look as you can see they turned out really really pretty that ombre is just flawless and that glitter is just super shiny and this is how they look like in the dark as you can see it wasn't super super dark in here but they look really pretty so i hope you guys enjoyed don't forget to like comment and subscribe follow me on facebook and instagram at getnell32 and i'll see you guys next time